What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension overview for you. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about an extension from Fredo 6 that allows you to cut holes in different objects inside of SketchUp. Before we get started, I wanna thank my newest supporters on Patreon. So big thank you to Yakuba Kolobari and David Stahlberg. Patreon, as most of you know, is the website where you can support creators that you like on YouTube. One of the perks of being a supporter on Patreon is you get to vote on the extension that we cover every week. So if that's something you're interested in, you want to support the show, maybe vote on the extension we cover every week, make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. So this week, my patrons voted, and they selected Visuhole from Fredo 6 as the extension to cover this week. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So this extension can be installed using the Sketchication plugin store. Um, it's a free extension. Um, it does have an option to donate. So if you like what Fredo's done here, make sure you click that button and uh, help him out a little bit. Um, but you can download that. One thing you do need to note is you do need to install libfredo as well. That's Fredo's library, um, which you can also find on Sketchication. So this extension is designed to help you cut holes inside of objects inside of your SketchUp models. So so the way this works is fairly simple. Um, it's a little intimidating when you first open it up, but the way it works is pretty simple in the sense that it basically gives you a set of stencils, or you create a stencil um, that'll then cut a hole in an object. So like for example, if we wanted to cut a hole right here in this object, you can see how this tool allows us to do that. And that allows us to cut holes in objects with thickness. Um, so the way that it works, if you wanna create a custom stencil, is you just go in here with the tool and you just click on this button right here to pick a stencil shape. And so you can move your mouse over really any shape inside of this model um, and you can select it in order to use that as your cutting tool. So you can see how I'm able to use that to cut a hole inside of this object. So one great function of this is the point the point that you create when you select your stencil shape is going to be the insertion point. Meaning for something like this opening right here, if I was to select this corner rather than the middle, or even the middle of this object, that would then be the insertion point for the, uh, the hole that this is going to cut. So you can see how I could then use that as an inference point to cut something like a door opening or something like that. So one of the great things about this extension is not only does it work on raw faces and geometry, it, all, it also works on group geometry. So this object right here, for example, is grouped. You can see how I'd have to double click inside of it to get to the raw geometry. But Visual Hole doesn't really care. Um, so if I was to create a stencil based on this object, for example, and click in here, you can see how I can cut a hole inside of this using that stencil. And one thing I want to note that's kind of important is you need to be careful what you have selected. So like for example, right now I've selected this object. Well, if I come over here and I click on this one, it's never going to cut a hole because as far as this extension is concerned, it's trying to cut a hole in this object over here. So you can see how having something selected and then this not doing anything is because you have something else selected over here. And that's going to be really important because if you're ever working with this it may feel like it's just not working and that's not really the case what's happening is it's just trying to cut a hole in something that you have selected and so one way to get around that would be to just click off of it and deselect this and then try it again and now you can see how when I mouse over something like this it's giving me kind of an automatic selection. So you need to pay attention to where the blue box is inside of this uh, when you're working with this extension. So one nice thing about this extension is it keeps a history of the stencils that you've created. So you can see how I have a number of different stencils that I've created within this model. And I can scroll back and forth between them in order to select them quickly. So you don't have to recreate the wheel every single time that you do this. Um, another thing that's great about this is it'll lock to an axis um, using the arrow keys. So like for example, if I wanted this to be on this green on this green plane, you can see how instead of trying to inference over this like I was before and trying to get this right and flat and all of that, I can just tap the left arrow key. You can also select a plane using these buttons right here. So I could lock this to that vertical plane by clicking on the Y key right here. 
And so now let's take a look at a couple of the different options that are in here um, for ways to cut holes and create holes with the tool. So the first one I want to talk about is I want to talk about the drill through options. So we have options to drill, stamp, carve, and emboss. So, and we'll talk about these others in a minute. The drill through is the one I want to focus on at the moment because that's going to be the one that's going to allow us to cut our holes. And so let's say that we created a stencil based on this shape right here. Well, some of these settings are going to be important. So you can select what you're doing with these shapes by clicking in these little buttons right here. And then these are going to do different things. And so to start off, let's go ahead and let's take the stencil that I just created and cut a hole in this object. Well, what you're going to notice when we do that is this cuts a hole, but it also cuts a hole in this back face, which isn't necessarily what you want, especially if you're cutting like door openings or something like that. And so this first option is really kind of a cool option in the sense that what it'll do is you can tell it to limit this to the first tube only or the first cut only. And what that means is if I come in here now and do the same thing where I cut a hole in this object, you can see I did the exact same thing and the only thing that was different was this setting. And so what that meant was this cut through one series of faces and then it stopped. So it didn't continue back like this one did over here. So that means you can cut like a door opening without having to worry about cutting a hole in this back face as well. So the second option, what that's going to do is that's going to come in here and instead of creating the tubes through the walls, so like for example, let's fly down here, we'll lock this to the red axis, so this will cut the hole but it won't create the lines in between them. So it won't cut the tube in here, it'll just delete out the faces right here. So generally speaking, you're gonna to wanna to leave this unselected because a lot of the time you're gonna be cutting door and window openings and things like that. And then this other option, this back option here, what that's gonna do is that's gonna create the hole with guidelines instead of edges. And what that means is that'll come in here and that'll create a guide on these faces but it's not actually going to cut the hole so you can use this to place guides um, without really worrying about um, actually cutting the hole in here so if you just wanted to for whatever reason drop a guide on a face this would allow you to do that now it is interesting to me it looks like in this case um, this is going through and this is creating a guide on the second wall here I think that has to do with these hierarchy settings um, I'm not a hundred percent sure but these settings kind of set the way that this uh, the way that this creates that inside of this group so you can see how if I deselect this first one what that means is now this isn't worrying about the grouping and so it's only cutting through this first wall and not the group in the second so what I think what's happening with that one is when it says recurse from top parent group or component, what it's doing is it's placing this guide and then it's going inside and doing it again when you have the recurse option selected. Honestly, I haven't played around with those too much. Um, I haven't really needed to, but they are something you may need to play around with if you start getting odd results like that one that you're not really expecting. So another thing I wanna point out is this can also cut a hole in a curved object. So let's say, for example, that we went back to, we'll go to our triple, we'll go to our triple stencil for a second. And I'm gonna select this right here. We'll talk about that a little bit more in a second. But note that this will actually come in here and I don't want the guides created. This will actually cut a hole inside of a curved face as well as a flat face. So you can use this to cut holes in curves as well. So if you wanted to create like a door or something like that, so let's say we wanted to cut an opening into this curved face. You can see how this would allow us to do that. Um, for some reason, it doesn't seem to like doing this on the ground. That may have something to do with one of the settings that I have. That Yeah, there we go. So it doesn't like doing that by following the surface here. Um, so sometimes you may have to play around with the settings in this tool a little bit to get it to do what you want. So now let's talk about the other options for things that you can do with this tool other than drilling holes. So the stamp option is just gonna take your stencil shape and it's just gonna stamp a shape 
on top of the face you have selected. So it's not gonna drill a hole, it's just gonna stamp and delete out um, the face wherever you place that little stencil right here. And then this other option is gonna stamp with guidelines instead of edges, meaning all that's gonna do is that's gonna create a guide on this face wherever you st stamp your stencil. I don't know how much you're gonna use that one to be completely honest, um, but it is in there as an option. So now let's talk a little bit about the carve and emboss options. So these, this tool in particular cuts holes all the way through an object. Well the carve and emboss options, instead of cutting a complete hole, this will kind of take this and push pull it back into the shape so it's like you're carving out the shape inside of your object. So like for example, if I have this profile selected and I use carve and I've set my distance to two inches, what this is gonna do and notice how this isn't working because this other face is selected. So we would just click out of this and then try again. Now when I mouse over it, it's selected. But if I was to click on this with the carve tool, what that's gonna do is that's gonna carve this shape backwards two inches into this face. And that works for pretty much any of your stencil shapes. One thing I do wanna point out is if you have your carve depth set to zero and you have the flatten the extruded faces function selected, it's not gonna work, it's gonna give you an error message. So if you get the error message that says, um, cannot create unit vector from zero length vector, what that means is you have the carve tool with the flatten extruded faces selected and you have a distance of zero set in there. And so you can adjust this depth to whatever you want. So you could set this to like four inches deep or really whatever you wanted to do. And so the emboss option, instead of deepening a hole inside of your object, that's gonna bring this out across this face. Um, so it's gonna bring this forward. It's almost like if you took this and push pulled this face outward in order to make this thicker, that's what that's gonna do. And one thing I wanna point out, because I kinda left this as is anyway, is you see this option for flatten the extruded faces? That came in here and that flattened the face that this created along here rather than it following the curve. If I was to turn that off and then do this again, you can see how what I get is instead of a flat face, I get a face that follows the curve of this object. So you can see how this is more of a curved face rather than a flat face. So that kind of allows you to adjust the way that you uh, want this to be finished inside of your model. Honestly, this other option, the carving or embossing is the master plane option. I haven't quite figured out what that one does yet. I think it might have to do with multiple different objects being in here at once, but I'm not really 100% clear on that one. Um, I haven't quite figured that one out, what that does. Um, one thing that's gonna be really important if you have a stencil like this one that has three different shapes, or if you have text or something like that, let's go ahead and do text. So let's say that we wanted to create some text that says, we'll say just the SketchUp Essentials. So we'll just place this right here. And then let's say we wanted to use this text as a stencil in order to make the words run across this face. Well, we could use the pick the stencil shape and select this like this. And you can see how that'll make this into a stencil. However, now if we were to take that and we were to try to, uh, if we were to try to emboss our text on this face, for example, along here, you can see how what that does is that doesn't give us a true um, embossment along this whole curve because what it's doing is it's doing it based on that point right here and so it's not really thick enough. It's not following the curve properly is what I'm getting at. Well, if you were to select this tool right here for follow the surface of the selection, what that would do is that would take your text and when I drop this in here, it would actually follow along this curve right here in order to, uh, in order to take your stencil and make it uniform across this whole curve. So that would work for the carve as well. So if you want to carve this back four inches into this wall, you would select the option in here for follow the um, follow the surface of the selection in order to uh, follow that whole curve. So this is a really powerful way to do things like this for openings and text and other things like that. Um, this option is just gonna set if these uh, extrusions go in a group or not. Um, I'm really not using this one too much, but like for example, if we were to add the emboss function right here and we were to set this so that the intersections go in a group, 
what that's going to do is instead of creating raw geometry like this one did inside of this face, that's going to take any geometry that you create and it's going to create it inside of a group instead of, um, instead of being raw like this. So and then the last series of functions are just going to allow you to apply materials to your text or your, um, your um, stencils. So that just means if you were to come in here and let's say you wanted this to be like a metal panel or something like that, you would just add a panel material to your model. Then you would select that using the eyedropper. And notice our face isn't selected again. So you would select this aluminum panel and now anything that's created with this tool is going to have that material applied to it. So this is great for automatically applying materials to things that you create with this extension. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Obviously there's a lot of functions contained inside this tool, but I think it's probably one of the best, if not the best hole cutting extensions I've found for SketchUp. But leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Is this something you'd use? Did you know about this extension? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.